Albert Einstein put forward one of the most profound explanations of the universe in his general theory of relativity. It wasn't a complete picture of the universe, though. But now, science might be one step closer. Hey guys, Julia here for D News. There are two theories that govern mostly everything in our universe. Einstein's theory of relativity accounts for the big stuff, the way planets move around a sun. His theory says that space-time is geometric and that large objects warp space-time. Think of a bowling ball on a sheet. As the bowling ball moves around the sheet, it bends the sheet around it. That's how large objects warp geometric space-time. Quantum theory explains all the weirdness that occurs when things get very, very small, how a proton can be both a particle and a wave. One of the strangest things about quantum theory involves an idea called entanglement. It's an idea Einstein wasn't too fond of. He called it spooky action at a distance. For most of the past century, these two theories seemed at odds with each other. If gravity governed everything, then these small particles shouldn't behave that way. And the puzzle of how these two pieces fit together to describe our universe has been one of the biggest frustrations in physics for the past hundred years or so. Though it's not for lack of trying, dozens of theories have been put forward, but none were satisfactory enough. Until one. After repeated rejections from journals, physicist Mark von Romsdonk described his theory in an essay published in the journal General Relativity and Gravitation. So in one neat theory, he ties up most of the loose ends between the two dominating theories in physics. He explained that entanglement could be the basis for geometric gravity. His idea considers two model universes, one called anti-de Sitter space. ADS, also called the bulk, is similar to ours in which there's three dimensions. It's filled with quantum particles and it obeys Einstein's laws of physics, but it doesn't expand or contract. The other universe, called the boundary, is only two dimensions. It's filled with elementary particles and doesn't contain gravity. According to physicist Juan Maldacena, the boundary and the bulk are equivalent. They follow the same physics. Some compare the two universes to a balloon. The thin membrane of latex is the 2D boundary and the air inside it makes up the bulk. Or others have compared it to a hologram where information is encoded on a 2D chip and projected onto 3D space. But by using the boundary to describe what's going on in the bulk, theoretical physics could now create calculations without using pesky gravity, and a whole new field of physics took off. But the question remained, how are these two universes connected? Well, that's where entanglement comes in. Entanglement is a pretty fascinating concept in physics, and to be honest, one I don't completely understand. Entanglement is when two particles are linked through an unseen pathway. Some researchers consider this pathway to be the same thing as a wormhole. When particles are connected in this way, a particle can affect the way the other particle spins, even if there is a vastness of space between them. So when observing one particle, we know the state of another. And while this strange behavior dominates most of the weirdness we call quantum physics, it could also be responsible for space-time. According to Romsdonk, space-time is just a geometrical picture of how stuff in the quantum system is entangled. As particles become entangled with each other, they form a network that looks like a tree branching off into many different directions. This network is called tensor networks. And according to Romsdonk, these networks connect the boundary to the bulk. Think of these connections like scaffolding, holding up the boundary membrane. If entanglement is reduced to zero, these connections are gone and the bulk is pulled apart. So entanglement is responsible for the existence of space-time. So I must caution that this is theoretical physics and most of these discoveries have only played out in mathematical equations for model universes, not necessarily our own universe. So while some research does support this idea, I'd say more research is needed. So are you curious for more theoretical physics? What about that whole holographic universe thing? Well, Trace and Ian have the spooky scoop in this episode right here. Using a laser interferometer, a laser beam is split and then recombined. If a change of phase is detected in the beam, a gravitational wave or a ripple in space-time may have been detected. So if you're a fan of our content, check out TestTube's newsletter. Get a weekly roundup of our most popular videos all across our shows at testtube.com forward. So what do you think about this? What are some of your favorite ideas on the quantum level? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to DNews so you don't miss a single episode.